I swear to God, half the plane just got off the boot camp. You should feel the render. Oh, oh, hello, Dorothy. Meats back on the menu, boys. Hello there, humans, hippies, earthlings, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and whoever you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too. I'm Bushka. Welcome back to the PUBG Mobile official channel day. We're going to be talking about the secrets of first person perspective, or at least stuff that's going to help. Uh, and by help, I mean stuff that's going to help you win games, influence people, find love, passion, and romance. Maybe not all those things, but it'll certainly help you get out of the boot camp hot job. A big part of... Oh, that's my hands over there on the right-hand side. I got tired, sick and tired of people telling me I was playing on an emulator uh, in the comments section here. So there you go. That's my fingers moving the camera around. I did a, a third-person perspective secrets uh, video for the, the channel not long ago. It seemed to do really well. And I wanted to talk about the big ticket items that you really need to get a handle on with regard to first person mode. Namely, there is no third person peeking, so you've got to be aware at all times. And that means specifically, not just with your visuals, you've really got to be on top of sounds. Now this next excerpt is from a video I did on my own channel, The Bushka on YouTube, where I do a lot of guides and tutorials showing sound. Now hear that deep sound, that's someone above you. That sound is someone on the same floor as you running on a concrete floor. Now, listen again. They're two different sounds. In first person, you can't always peek around a corner. You have to rely on your ears. Now, if we watch this section here, I've enlarged the mini-map. I'm going to follow the person around who is above me. I'm going to hear them run first on the concrete above me. And then they're going to run above me internally where it'll be a deeper more thuddy sound and then you're going to hear them walk down the stairs so i know exactly where they are listen so you see there was three different sounds there there was an open area concrete run then there was an internal sound like he was in a building on the floor above me and then there was the sound of the stairs so i tracked him and i also used his footprints on the mini map now i just did a footprints guide it's on my channel footprints will render within 20 meters regardless of whether people are running walking uh, or uh, crouch down in a prone position and duck walking forward. They will all register after 20 meters. So you know if there are footprints above you, they are within 20 meters. So you can make very clever assumptions as to where people are and get the right idea and make the right decision. How thirsty is Bushka? Pretty damn thirsty. Oh, you are such a stat padding grub. Uh, the other thing I love about first person, which is massive for me, is it rewards people that can aim. Now, I know that sounds cheap, but it really is exactly what I'm talking about. If we watch this little passage of play here, I'm using a shotgun and basically I'm running into a whole bunch of guys in squad mode who are running around very early in the game and I've only got a, a vest and a shoddy and I don't even have that now. So these guys, I've got to get, I've got to get this and I'm going to hit some really nice single tap shots. One and then two. And that's, that's a skill. That's something that you have to work on and learn how to do. And I'm not being big-handed about that at all. I'm just saying you have to learn to shoot and learn to aim. In third-person mode, you can be undynamic like that. You can sit behind these crates and you would be able to see this guy without exposing yourself, set your shot up, and have a far better chance of making the kill. In first-person, it rewards people that actually learn to shoot well. I'm going to show you something else that's massive for FPP here as well. And I think you probably saw it right there. Watch the pre-fire here. I see his footsteps. I know he's not on the left. He's got to be on the right-hand side. I start firing before I'm actually around that corner. It's cheesy. It's an exploitation of a game mechanic. But I'm putting the knowledge the game is giving me into that situation right there. Let's watch it one more time. Now, this is the kind of stuff I do videos on my channel for all the time. Pre-firing, strafing, uh, reading footsteps, hit markers, distances. This is all info that the game gives you free of charge. And if you look at it, you can be so much more effective. 
And this is one of the reasons why you will see a lot of people hot dropping boot camp solo versus squad all the time. And it's like the most popular thing in the game because it teaches you how to brawl. And brawling, uh, I did a house to house masterclass, a brawling breakdown on my channel as well. These are the things that make you a better FPP player. If I was in third person right now, I would be peeking this rock. I would know exactly where that guy was. But I can't peek the rock. I've got to use my ears. I'm listening. I'm triangulating. Where is he? He's down there. Smoke. We get our kill and we follow it up. You can also get very, very uh, good chemistry with a squad mate. I'm with Mr. Ouija here. He's a uh, very long time squad mate of mine. And we don't have voice comms going on, but what he's going to do is something I like to call locking the target in. He is going to engage the target and then just pull back. He's just basically engaged the target and made him look at him. I've watched the footprints and then we come around the corner and we smash. And Ouija, no point in time, was in any danger there. He literally just got the guy's attention. Now we talk about footprints. Uh, we, we talk about footprints. We talk about sound and... They are easily the most important part of first-person uh, perspective. There is no bigger negative to first-person than playing without sound. I mean, you can play one-handed. As long as you can hear where people are, you can actually set kills up. If you play without sound, you are going to get absolutely mixed in first-person mode. Now, I'm able to triangulate. Their footsteps, they're within 20 meters. There is literally nowhere else left for them to be. If they're on the crates, they'd be making a different noise. They have to be in that crate there. I'm running a Mark 14 and an M416. I'm going to weapon switch here so that I've got a full clip when I come back out. And we're going to get the chicken dinner. Now, finally, I want to talk about something that's really, really important with first person. Uh, because you don't have the visual aids that you have in third person, uh, you can't third party um, people, you have to get creative. You have to be able to really put yourself in the box with the other guy and say, what's he going to do? What would he be doing? Um, and you can see in this situation, I've got a whole squad ahead of me there and I've been a real grub and I've basically seen them getting involved in a firefight pulled back, got myself a little window, put myself between them and the zone, and now I'm just going to farm them as they come in. And they do a pretty solid job because I'm at quite a range here and there's enough cover there for them to just get their knocks up. So I have to move locations and set up to be a little more aggressive. Now, I'm immediately thinking if that was my squad, what would I be doing with them? And that imagination allows me to realize that if I was in that squad, I would be looking to flank around to the right-hand side here and get into these houses and push me uh, pretty bloody hard because coming at me directly across this open field will be a really bad idea for them. I've got a car 98, a four-time scope, and a whole lot of love. Now, when they get here, and they are going to get up here, uh, when they get here, you'll see we do pre-firing, um, we think where would they be going, i.e. they're going to flank, uh, what would they be doing, and then I'm going to lock a guy in to that house over there on the right-hand side of the screen, and rather than just running through a doorway and giving him an even break, I am going to go all over creation, run around, keep an eye on his footsteps, and just get an easy squad wipe. Now, they were very unlucky there. That particular member of the squad, Asian Blonde, got hit by the red zone, uh, and I was very happy to finish him off. But the other three, straight away, we relocate. Now, relocating is massive if you're in first-person mode. You cannot sit still because it's so much harder to cover off the rest of the map than it is in third-person, right? So you have to be moving all the time. I hear footsteps. Can't see him on the mini-map. He's got to be coming on the right. We're pre-firing even as we come out. The next shot I'm thinking is going to be coming from that guy over there. He's got to go to that house. So we're going to duck down left, get a, get a quick heal in, and then we're going to work some magic on the right-hand side of the map. Relocating, pre-firing, watching the mini-map, using the zone line. These are all things that once you start putting them into your gameplay, um, they become mechanics that allow you to win more, to allow you to get more kills. I'm not the best player in the world. I'm not even the best player in my clan. Man, I'm just a guy who loves playing video games and loves analyzing 
what gets the win. Um, and I was sure as hell that dude was going to pop there. Nice uh, headshot from him too, by the way. Very nice headshot under the pump. Pretty impressive. Uh, and now I'm going to push up there, get a heal in. I know there's a knock. I'm going to leverage that knock into a, a bad engagement for them and a good engagement for me. And yeah, pretty simple. Those are some real key factors for first person mode. There's a lot of stuff that goes into it and there's more nuance to that. And there's things that you can get involved with that will make your life easier. I know there's two sets of footprints there. I can see two sets of footprints. I don't know why they all hit the, uh, the frame of the window. Probably at the right height if I had zoomed in. But I'm just more or less letting him know where I am there. And I'm moving all the way around, keeping him at sixes and sevens. And then we're gonna clear him. Yep, happy days. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, if you liked the video, hit the like button. Remember to subscribe to the channel. The PUBG Mobile official channel is fantastic. Come along and subscribe to my channel if you want as well. It's a good channel. I like it. it um, <laughs> it's got a great blog posting on it. And uh, just generally look after yourself. If you've got any ideas for videos, pop them in there and I'll, uh, I'll have a look at them. And hopefully we can get some content up here that is consumer and community driven. Rock and roll, boys and girls. And until next time, stay safe on the battlefield. Bye for now.